Hey everyone, my name is Wedge. With Eldritch Moon pre-release right around the corner, now is the best time to, you know, prepare for it. In this video, I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about how the pre-release works, what you'll get, what you should expect, and some general ideas about the set in general, and what you should pay attention to when opening your packs, and some of the best commons in each color so you know what to play, yeah. This video is going to be your one-stop shop for all things Eldritch Moon pre-release. Let's come back with a bang, shall we? Enjoy. If you've never been to a pre-release before, it's one of the best events you could possibly attend. It's casual in nature, so you don't have to worry about being surrounded by seasoned pros. Lots of players of all different backgrounds and skill levels go to pre-releases. It is an event for everyone and more for fun than anything else, at least most of the time. When you sign up for the event at your local shop, it will usually cost somewhere between $25 and $40. The higher the price, the better prizes there are for the players with the best records. Most pre-releases tend to be closer to 25 each though, for the record. So what do you get for your money? Gotta love Wizards of the Coast graphics. This is what you get. A cool little deck box holds everything. There's a neat little roll sheet to help you build your deck along with six packs. You'll receive four packs of Eldritch Moon and two packs of Shadows over Innistrad. The reason it's not all Eldritch Moon is because the set is a small set. It's meant to support Shadows over Innistrad. The idea is to combine the two sets to take advantage of both of them. The more you know. Anyways, you'll also receive this cool 20-sided die in your little box with the Eldritch Moon set symbol on it. And lastly, and probably the best part about the entire pre-release, you'll receive this double-sided foil zombie token. These are awesome and will be sought after. Don't just give yours away. Trust me, they'll have decent trade value. Just remember that. So what do you do with your six packs of cards? You build a deck. That's what the pre-release is. It's a sealed deck. This means that you open all six of your packs and then build the best deck you can out of what you open. Your deck must contain at least 40 cards, and you can technically go over that if you want to, but I highly suggest you stick to 40 cards. The more cards you add, the more difficult it'll be to find your best stuff. Also, the usual breakdown of a deck is either 23 non-lands and 17 lands, or 22 non-lands and 18 lands. I wouldn't stray too much from either of those. You're going to need consistency in your mana, so don't choke yourself before you even start playing. It's a bad move. Small note, your local game star will most likely have lands for you to use, so you don't necessarily have to bring your own. But if you have basic land cards that you enjoy, you're more than welcome to bring them. Also remember sleeves. And a notepad for tracking life and some water, and maybe a snack, or two, or three. All right, I'm hungry now. Let's move on to strategy. When you open your packs, you're looking for a couple things to guide your deck choices as you build. The first and most obvious are bomb rares and mythics. If you pull the likes of these, you're obviously going to want to run them. Just be careful. Make sure you have the support in those colors. If you don't, those cards usually won't be enough to carry you. Don't let a pretty card distract you from a more solid color. Second, and this one is most important, removal is king. This has always been true and it'll always be true. The first thing you should pay attention to after opening your pool is the removal. Where is it? Which colors have strong removal? Which have none? More often than not, the most removal will lead you to the most consistent colors for you. All right, time to talk specifics. Eldritch Moon did a lot to support the existing two-color archetypes from Shadows over Innistrad. The rest of this video is dedicated to showing you signs that may help you build your decks. We'll begin with Blue-White Spirits, a relatively lackluster strategy that comes over from Shadows over Innistrad. The big problem with this archetype in Triple Shadows Limited was that other decks simply overpowered and outraced it. There were too many answers and not enough payoff. This time around, Blue-White is taking a more mid-range controlling role with more reactive spells. Nibble, Ghast, Herald, Chilling Grasp, and Fogwalker are all examples of what spirits are trying to do now, lock games down. Geist of the Archives helps with the long game, letting you move through your deck faster. Showing a 0-4 spirit with a nice ability really solidifies that this deck isn't going for the fast win. It's a prison strategy. Your staple creatures are Tattered Haunter, Sigardian Priest, then Shadow Spirits, Nippolis of Dusk, and Stormrider Spirit. Bombs you should look out for that could help lead you down this path are Subjugator Angel, Drogskull Shieldmate, and Nibblus of Frost. Of course, many of the cards I'm going to mention are good in any deck of the chosen color, but the idea here is to narrow your focus. So the more cards you have that I'm mentioning, the better off you'll be going with those colors. It's, you know, fun fun. Next up is Blue Black Zombies. The strategy has taken a bit of a turn. The original idea back in Shadows Limited was that you'd flood the board with zombies, Remove stuff, then use some Madness cards for value. 
Things are changing a bit with Eldritch Moon and the Emerge mechanic. Emerge changes everything. The deck wants to abuse synergies like Wretched Griff plus Enlightened Maniac. You see what's going on here? Cards like Haunted Dead work great with Emerge as well. Basically, zombies are moving away from madness and more towards pushing out huge stuff early on the back of less huge stuff. Your deck wants a lot of zombies and a lot of ways to abuse the graveyard, so that's what you have to look for. Laboratory Brood is a great staple in the deck, so is Ingenious Scob, Cemetery Recruitment, and Wailing Ghoul. All wonderful. The bomb cards? Graph Harvest is stupidly powerful in this deck with enough zombies. Also, anything with Emerge in your colors. Distended Mindbender, Drownyard Behemoth, Abundant Maw, Vexing Scuttler. I don't care. If you have the Emerge creatures and you have things like we just talked about to take advantage of them, go to town. Go nuts. Enjoy. If you want a few general staples for blue and black, you can't overlook Exultant Cultist for replacing itself, Gavinian Hollowed, and Midnight Scavengers. All great. Black Red Vampires, one of the strongest, most brutal archetypes in Shadows Limited, both sealed and draft. The players who got to build this deck always had fun and usually burned everything to the ground. With the right pieces, the archetype is nearly unstoppable. With the addition of Eldritch Moon, the madness mechanic is becoming much more consistent with an increase in both enablers and payoff cards. You aren't technically aiming to play a vampire deck most of the time, the mechanic just sort of leads you to that naturally. Additions of solid madness staples like Olivia's Dragoons, Fury Blade Vampire, and Alchemist Greeting really bring a whole new level of consistency and respect to Black Red in this format. These are the cards you need to look for if you want to play the deck. You need madness enablers and madness payoff cards. Shadows will bring you the likes of Fiery Temper, Insolent Neonate, Incorrigible Use, Call the Bloodline, all solid cards, but remember, you're only getting two packs of Shadows and four of Eldritch Moon, so let's focus the rest of our attention there. Both Abandoned Reason and Distemper of Blood, the Red Combat Tricks, have Madness. That's awesome. Those are the kinds of cards you want to take advantage of. I will admit, Black didn't bring nearly as much to the table in terms of Red-Black synergy. Markov Crusader is cool, but not game-breaking. Weirded Vampire is alright. Of course, the rares are just fine, but as far as synergistic Black cards for the Black-Red deck, the color is slightly lacking. But no matter. There's enough removal and card advantage to make up for that. As always, removal's king. Black Green Delirium is a super awkward strategy to talk about, it really is. I'm not going to give it the time the other archetypes get because all the best cards are uncommon or above. Seriously, they are. Grim Flare is mythic, Morn Willow is uncommon, Liliana's Elite is uncommon, Ishkana is mythic. I could do this all day. Whisper of Emrakul is uncommon, Narwood Dryad is uncommon. We're basically left with Backwood Survivalist and Thraben Foulbloods. Not good enough for me, sorry. I can in good conscience tell you to play a Delirium strategy when too many of the great pieces are just too difficult to come by. It doesn't have the same support at the common level the other archetypes have. It does have a little support, obviously, but not as much as it needs. You need things to go really right, let's just say that. Time to talk about werewolves. Now, I know this is going to be hard for a lot of you to hear, so werewolf fans, sit down for a second. Okay, now look. Sometimes archetypes change when a new set comes out. Sometimes they get better, sometimes they get worse. No matter what happens, just remember, werewolves love you and it isn't your fault that they're changing. It's not your fault. It's not, okay? With that disclaimer over, werewolves got a serious nerf in Eldritch Moon. The creature type took a huge hit. Being able to transform without having to do anything was amazing. It's what made the creature type so powerful. The new Eldritch Wolves are far less impactful when your opponent does nothing for a turn. No real capitalization there, so in essence, they are going to be slower. Sorry to say Ulvenwald Captive doesn't have the same early game pressure that Duskwatch Recruiter did. I'm not saying it isn't useful, just prepare for Red Green to be a bit slower and a bit more, I don't know the right word, I guess it would be random? Yeah, the deck's pretty random now. You're hoping to net some value werewolves like the Captive and Smoldering Werewolf. Then you're praying to Emrakul that you pull multiple Waxing Moon. If you do get a decent amount of wolves and a couple moons, that could be enough to win straight away. It is something to pay attention to. Some bomb cards to lead you into werewolves? I mean, there aren't a ton. The archetype is basically just red-green good stuff at this point, hoping you get Waxing Moon, so I guess Waxing Moon is a bomb. Ulrich's obviously a bomb. Assembled Alphas is a beating and a half if you can pull it. I don't know, there's too much separation between the colors for me. Some good red and green cards for you though. Thermo Alchemist is a decent filler card. Wolfkin Bond and Swift Spinner are both super sweet. 
We'll talk more about red comments in our draft guide video, but I am not impressed overall. The last general archetype in the block is green-white humans. Thanks to a lot of werewolves also being humans on their front faces, the deck was beyond ridiculous in Shadows Limited when it came together. Individual powerhouses like Veteran Cathar, Dauntless Cathar, Solitary Hunter, and Hinerlin Logger were just a few of the creatures humans brought to the table. In Eldritch Moon, it's going even wider, essentially channeling the powers of Inspiring Captain. Hamlet Captain is a crazy awesome addition to the deck and is indeed a bomb if you get it. So is Lone Rider. That card is just unfair when you have a pump spell to make it flip itself. If we're talking staples of the deck, Courageous Outrider is just dumb. Borrowed Grace is important. Crossroads Consecrator is better than you think. Sigardian Priest comes up again as a crazy strong white card. Add in the aforementioned Inspiring Captain and Intrepid Provisioner from Shadows and you're looking alright. Unlike other decks that can sort of just come together. You really need some synergy to make this deck perform better than the red-green good stuff deck. I'm just saying. Bombs in the deck are basically just really good white and green cards. Lone Rider really is crazy strong. Courageous Outrider again might be the best card in the deck. Collective Effort is unfair if you pull it. Heron's Grace Champion is downright bannable. The card's so good. You get the picture. As far as normal white staples you should be aware of. Steadfast Cathar is really, really good. Sigardian Priest again, super strong. I'd also like to mention Guardian of Pilgrims. It doesn't have flash or anything, but it's a nice way to get some damage in from another creature. It's better than you might think. That's going to do it for the common archetypes in this new sealed environment. Can you make a deck out of two colors that I didn't mention? Yeah, of course you can. There are cards designed for that. I'm not saying you can only make decks with these color combinations, obviously not. All I'm saying is that these are the color combinations that are set up to play the best with each other. That's all I'm saying. Don't let that stop you from playing your crazy blue-green madness submerged deck with a noose constrictor, chilling grasp, and lashweed lurker. Seriously, go nuts. It's the pre-release. And we're finally done. Hope you enjoyed our pre-release guide video, and I hope it helped you in some way. The event is designed for fun, so just make sure to enjoy yourself. That's the entire reason it exists. Don't forget that. Also, be sure to let me know which cards you end up opening and which decks you end up playing. Super pumped to hear how you all do. As always, subscribe for the latest and most reliable Magic the Gathering information you could ever need. This is the Mana Source. I'm Wedge. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. This video is brought to you in part by TCGPlayer.com. Since pre-releases this weekend and releases next weekend, what better time to pre-order Eldritch Moon Booster Boxes? You can grab any amount you want on TCG Player right now for around $95 each. Way cheaper than the $120 that a lot of stores sell them for. Click the link, pre-order some box goodness, and everyone wins. Yay!